The story I want to tell you today is about the great Rabbi Rashash, who was a rabbi in Vilna in the 1800s and was hugely respected. Um, and amongst the different amazing things that the rabbi did, one of the things he ran was a special gemach fund, um, a fund where people could take loans if they didn't have enough money, uh, and then they could pay him back. And that way he'd be able to help people with tzedakah over and over and over again as people took out the loans and repaid them, and then others could take out the loans and repay them as well. And this story has to do with him and a simple tailor called Rav Zalman. Um, Rav Zalman needed a loan from the rabbi, and he went and he visited him and organized the loan and took the money, and he, he used the money and was able to get back on his feet, and once he collected back all the money and um, and earned back the money that he'd loaned from the Rashash, he went to the rabbi to pay back the money. And when he walked into the rabbi's room, he could see that the rabbi was deeply involved in his study. Um, so he said to the rabbi, I'm, I'm here to repay the money. And he put the envelope on the desk for the rabbi. And the rabbi like nodded, picked up the envelope. And that was that. Rav Zalman had paid back the loan to the Rashash and he went on his way. Now, the Rashash was so involved in his studies that he hadn't really picked up that anyone had even been in the room. He hadn't really noticed. And he just took the envelope and put it into the volume of the Talmud that he was studying. And then later on, when he'd finished studying, he closed the book, put it back on the shelf, didn't think about it. Not surprisingly, the rabbi kept very good records to make sure that he knew who he'd lent money to and who had paid the money back. And as he was going through his records one day, he saw that Rav Zalman had never paid back the loan. And so he approached Rabbi Zalman and said, you've never paid back the loan and, and the time's come. Have you got the money? Rabbi Zalman looked at him and he said to the Rishash, but Rabbi... I came into your room, you were there, I handed you the envelope with the money, you took it. Don't you remember? And the Rashash says, I don't remember. And Rabbi Zalman said, well, there was no one else there, I have no witnesses to prove it. And so they went to a Din Torah, a, um, a special adjudication, whereby the highest rabbis in the town would listen to the cases of different people who had different issues and problems and would help adjudicate and decide what to do when they couldn't reach an agreement, like a little Jewish court. And they went to the, the Beit Din and they were talking to the, the rabbis and explaining their case. And the rabbi said, look, there are no witnesses. It's your word against your word. So the only way that we can resolve it is that we'll have to get Rav Zalman to swear, to make a, an absolute declaration that he paid you back the money. And if he's willing to swear on it, then we will accept the debt is paid. Now in Jewish law, it's a big deal to swear on something like that. And, and the Rashash knew that that was a really big deal and that would have huge implications if Rav Zalman was lying and he was falsely swearing that he was telling the truth. And he didn't want to have another Jew put in the position where they might be falsely swearing. So instead, he decided he would drop the case and let the money go. Being a small town and the way that things worked, people had heard that there'd been a Din Torah, a, um, you know, a rabbinic case like this. And, um, you know, everybody sided with the Rishash. They didn't know the details or anything, but they thought if there's been something between this tailor and between our great rabbi, well, we're taking the side of the great rabbi. And soon, nobody was going to get their clothes fixed at the tailor. Rabbi Zalman's business started to fail. He wasn't invited to social engagements anymore. People weren't talking to him at the synagogue. His life got very, very difficult for him and his family. And eventually he could see there was no future for him in the town anymore. And even though he'd done nothing wrong, he ended up leaving the town and going and setting up a small tailoring business in another place far away in a very small house because he was already struggling financially and him and his family were really, really unhappy. 
And everything continued just that way until one day, the Rishash, that great rabbi, needed to look something up and guess which book he needed to look it up in. It was the same book that he had been studying that day. And as he opened it, out fell an envelope. And in that envelope was a collection of money. And he couldn't work out why it was there. And then oh, it hit him all of a sudden. It was the money from Rav Salman. He had paid him back. He had been telling him the truth. And all of the trouble that had been caused was the Rishash's fault. So the Rishash desperately ran to the tailor's house to tell him what had happened, to apologise and to see if he could fix it. And when he got there, he found out that the tailor had had to sell his house and that he had moved away and that things had gone really badly for him ever since this incident. And so he was determined to find him. So he made inquiries until he could find him and he went to his house. He travelled a long way to see him because he no longer lived in the village. And he said to him, I beg your forgiveness. I'm so sorry. He explained to him what happened. And he said, I am going to go around to every Jewish institution in our town, every shul, every Beit Midrash or house of study, every Jewish business, and I'm going to tell people what happened and that it was my fault and that you are innocent and I want you to come back to our town. And Rav Zalman just looked sadly and he said, it won't work. He said, it's a lovely idea, but it won't work. You know what people are like. They'll just say that you're such a great and forgiving man. They won't think that I was the one who was honest in the first place. It's not going to change how people feel about me. I still won't be able to make a living and do business and live in the town. The Rishash was devastated. You know, he was a great rabbi and a good man. He was always trying to help people. And he could see that Rav Zalman was right about human nature. But then he had an idea. He said... My son is coming up to the age where he should get married. And I see that you have a daughter who's also coming up to the age where she should get married. Why don't we arrange a match between my son and your daughter? They can get married together. And everybody will see, obviously, if our children are getting married, that there's no issue, there's no dispute between us, and that you are obviously a good man from a good family, or there wouldn't be this kind of marriage brokered. And that's what they did. And the son and the, do the daughter got married um, from the two different families. And they were really, really happy together. And what this ties into is an amazing Jewish idea that before a baby is even made or born, Hashem has already match made the perfect husband or wife and will find some way to bring those two together. And what other way could he bring together these two than through such an amazing...